Hey, Creed, Rocky was wrong. The toughest opponent you're going to have to face is me. All right, party people, here we go. Ooh, as is the usual tradition. Mm-hmm. That's a total of two for the show. As we go in to watch Creed. See how good this damn thing is. Two hours later. Okay, party people. Can we talk about Creed? Or can we motherfucker talk about Creed? Uh, this is the spoiler edition, by the by. I gave it 15 out of 15 of my dollars when I saw the trailer. Uh, that's designated for perfect fucking movies. This movie was not perfect. <laughs> Let's start at the start and get rid of the negatives. Because there weren't that many of them. So we're going to go through those. Uh, let's see. I'm going to start with the most egregious one to me was when I accidentally stumbled upon another trailer for it that showed Rocky in a fucking hospital bed. Uh, like the day before I went to go see it. This is an early review, by the way, because that's the beauty of living in Los Angeles. Uh, fucking show Rocky in a fucking hospital bed pissed me the fuck off because I'm like, why are you showing that shit? That's probably a key element in the movie. So when we got to that element in the movie, relatively quickly, this is a fast-paced movie. When we got to that element in the movie, I was like, okay, what the fuck was the point of that? Turns out, Rocky has cancer uh, in this movie, and he's going to fight that fight. And if I'm going to fight, then you're going to fight, is the basic premise of it. Uh, so if he's going to fight against Hodgkin's lymphoma, then the Kree's going to fight against the heavyweight champ or the lightweight champ of the world. And you're gonna fight and fight and you're gonna fight. That's the whole point. So, they get to that particular point in the movie. Uh, I bring up that this is a problem because what happens is this is intermingled with a fucking montage of Creed preparing for his big fight. There are a couple montages in here. There's Creed preparing for his big fight against lightweight champ of the world out in Mario in England. And the problem I have with this montage is not the montage itself, it's that they're trying to show, they do a pretty good job of showing the effects of cancer on Rocky. I'm pretty dark right now and I'm completely black and now I'm a little darker again. Okay, so they show the pr pretty good effects of, of chemotherapy on Rocky, except the way they splice together the montage, it goes back and forth from relatively healthy but old Rocky to cancery Rocky and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> There's no linear timeline that shows the deterioration of Rocky in the uh, in the damn montage. Get it right. There are certain director directorial uh, things that they do that don't really eh that don't that, that keep it from being perfect. It's a damn good movie. It's a damn it's a good Rocky movie. It, it's it goes back to the roots of the original Rocky and Rocky Balboa. The fifth Rocky, because there was no movie that was called Rocky Five. It was Rocky One through Four and Balboa. Understand? Mm hmm. That's how we choose to remember that particular history. So, <clears throat> it, uh, it keeps up with the good Rockies. Not the Rockies that are considered good because they're cheesy, which is three and four, but the good Rockies. Um, the montages work. Michael B. Jordan works in this movie. Um, he's got a love interest. I think her name is Tessa Thompson. First of all, I want Michael B. I said in the trailer I want Michael B. Jordan's back. I want Michael B. Jordan's life. This motherfucker got paid, got paid, you understand, to make out with Tessa Thompson and have PG-13 rated love scenes in front of a turtle. Uh, just watch the movie and you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, it's the love affair between, it's basically setting him up as the next Rocky. Uh, but in modern times, modern era. You know, with a few different changes. Not just that he's black and the Rocky was white. The race thing isn't fucking brought up but once as a joke. That's because uh, Creed calls Rocky unk as an uncle, white folks. 
that are watching this. And uh, Tessa Thompson sees this and is like, he's your uncle, but he's white. He's like, uh, we're a long time now. Yeah. And that's, the only, that's the only thing that comes up about it, which is good. So, uh, unlike Rocky and Adrian, uh, Creed and his chick, Bianca, Creed and Bianca, uh, are not frumpy looking older people, you know, Sylvester Stallone's in boxing shape, but he ain't a good looking dude. These are two 20 something year old flexy sexy ass motherfuckers <laughs> being flexy sexy ass motherfuckers on each other. That's what, that's what that level, it was, it, it was a scene out of pick a fucking black romantic comedy. That's the fucking scenes we got between the two of them. Um, Felicia Rashad does an admirable job in this movie with what little fucking lights I have. Uh, with what li- I just walked into a bad fucking lighting scene. And I thought this place would be much more lit up than that. And I apologize, party people. You can still hear my voice. Okay, good. So she does a good job as uh, not what you think in the trailer. She's not this Creed's, whose name is Adonis, Donnie. Through the movie, get it? Apollo, Adonis. Hold on, I'm about to get into some light right now. There we go. She's not his biological mother. She's Apollo's wife. You see, Adonis Creed is a bastard. Apollo fucked some groupie on the road, and along came Adonis, and Apollo died before he was born. And Felicia Rashad's character takes him in uh, from the juvenile detention center that we start the movie off at, where he's fighting some motherfucker. And the kid that they got, pretty good cast, pretty good casting all around is what I'll say. This is pretty good casting because the kid looks relative, looks pretty de- close to Michael B. Jordan. It's not like you jump cut to today and see Michael B. Jordan and it's like, oh, that ain't the same motherfucker. It's like, oh, no, I can see that. They're, yeah, he looks just like him. Uh, I like some of the stylistic uh, things that the director decided to do with some of the shots, some of the angles that he took, uh, modern things up a little bit. Uh, still very true to the Rocky... Quintella, quintet of movies, because again, there's only five before this one. Uh, still ch- stay true to it, paid homage to it, but not uh, over fan service of the franchise. And I'm going to move up to what I believe is a more well lit area for this. Now, uh, let's see. I guess we'll get into this, to the story. Uh, some of the good parts. I mentioned there were some bad parts, but honestly, I kind of for Oh! Here's another bad part and uh, that I'm going to go through while I remember it before we get to the all good stuff. Uh, the final fight scene between Creed and the uh, champ of the world, who uh, Conlon is his name, the English dude's name. Um, it seemed to go by a little fast. I can understand why it seemed to go by a little fast because boxing now has a reputation of being super effing slow. Uh, and I guess they were trying to keep people's interest and try to make it as epic as possible and a lot of times in day standards epic also means fast but they didn't necessarily need to do that it felt like it was a little bit too fast and I can understand why because it was a very slow building movie they did not uh, do what some of the later slash considered cheesier Rocky movies did and was just all fight 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 long ass fight uh, it's been a significant portion of the time in the ring no, they spent a significant portion of the time building character and building stories and building the connection between these uh, people. And the connection that they built wasn't, didn't feel fake or manufactured. It felt like they hit the points that you would expect a good Rocky movie to hit. Um, they hit the points that almost feel like they could be cliched if you'd seen them in a few other boxing movies and probably if this is a success will be cliched in like a couple of years, but uh, as they hit them, they didn't feel cliche, they didn't feel fake, they felt like you knew that there were some platitudes that they were, that they were going for and some, you know, big uplifting moments and some kind of like, it did the movie worked so well that the cheesy moments didn't feel cheesy, is what I'm saying. The cheesy speeches didn't feel cheesy. The exposition didn't necessarily feel like exposition, it felt like people were catching up and you can kind of feel the chemistry between Jordan and Stallone, in my opinion. Um, there's a battery. I think I got a good battery. All right. Um, 
yeah, the final fight scene was went a little bit fast, but as we got to the end and the big epic climactic moment, uh, that's when it that's when the pace of it really started to work. Early on, when Creed lands a good punch, a good uppercut, I believe, I actually heard somebody in the crowd cheering. And we're gonna talk about the crowd. Now nah, I think about it, I think that was the other bad part was the motherfucking crowd. There was there was some big speech uh, between Rocky and uh, Creed about Rocky's cancer after he just finds out. And somebody brought their motherfucking baby. Somebody brought their goddamn baby to see fucking Creed at 7.30 at night on a motherfucking Tuesday. Fuck you. Leave your kid at home, motherfucker. Shit. Especially when they're young enough to be fucking crying for no reason or for little baby reasons in the middle of a fucking adult goddamn fucking movie. Fuck you. Anyway. Um, and then, early on, like, just, just as the movie's starting, right, they do this assigned seating thing. And assigned seating can be good or can be bad. I was kind of hoping that the theater wouldn't be full and I kind of sit wherever the fuck I want to, but I was still able to pick the seat that I kind of wanted. And when I got there, there was somebody sitting right next to the seat, next to me, next to my assigned seat. So I'm like, all right, there really isn't anybody here. I'll sit one over. I don't want to be crowded up on this chick here. So thank you, Train, for honking in the middle of my fucking video. Um, so as I'm sitting down, here comes this couple. And I guess the chick looks at me, spread out with my coutrement, right, the popcorn, and... I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is, but she looks like she doesn't want to sit next to me or something. And the dude's like, uh, you want me to sit here? And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. Uh, and to myself, I'm like, I'll just move. Because I wasn't in the right seat anyway. I was like, I'll just get up and go into my uh, uh, fucking sign seat. Fuck you, lady. Like, just fucking sit the fuck down. Like, it's... <sighs> the reason I didn't sit next to somebody was because there were empty seats there, and I didn't think other people were... Really, other people would be coming, because not a lot of people knew that this was going to be an early release. Uh, here in LA, but then they came in and it was like, yeah, you know, kind of fuck you. Anyway, so I think that was really the only bad points that I had in this movie. They touched on people more than they focused on a few people. Uh, Wood Harris is seen in the trailer and he's seen early on in the movie. I kind of would have wanted to see a little bit more of him. Uh, they bring up uh, Creed's first big fight early on, kind of a training fight, but not really a training fight, like his first like pro fight under Rocky. Thank you, Bust, for interfering in my fucking show. Um, and it's with this, the son of this kid who, I guess, trained Rocky back in the day, and who's kind of bitter because Rocky decided not to train his kid, but now he's training Apollo's kid, and he's gonna leak it there to the press that he's Apollo's kid, even though, uh, Adonis didn't really want to trade on his father's name. He wanted to make a name of his own. And he's going to leak it out just out of spite. And he's going to have his kid go after Creed. Just kind of fuck with him. Uh, I kind of wish... Like, it was a lot jammed into... I don't know how long this movie was. It didn't feel like it was that long. It felt 90 minutes. If it was over two hours, I'd be surprised. But not really. Because they jammed a lot of stuff in there. They went through a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> before this movie was over. But it didn't... I noticed it, but it didn't feel like they were jamming a whole bunch of shit in there. Um, it did feel like they were... It didn't feel like they were over-cramming the movie. I'll say that. It felt like they were putting a lot of stuff in it, but it didn't feel like they were over-cramming the movie. Uh, like I said, let's see. Um, Adonis does, does his, you know, Fall from Grace where Bianca's having a concert. She's a singer. Again, it's not Adrian. She's not some shrieking violet in a fucking pet store. She's on her way to being a star herself, except she's going progressively deaf, which is a weird twist, but all right, fine. Progressively deaf. And it's like, uh, oh, how do they bond? Well, they're two young, flexy, sexy ass <laughs> motherfuckers. Of course they're gonna bond. They're two, they're two fucking attractive people <laughs> in an apartment full of attractive Full of, full of young people, but they're two clearly superstar, attractive-ass motherfucking people. Like, please, please. 
It's like, oh, how did the jock and the cheerleader fall in love? I fucking wonder. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, yeah, they bond, but it's like, yeah, we already know you're going to get together. There's no big fucking surprise. They have chemistry after they connect. I, I feel like the initial connection between them, they kind of glossed over because they kind of understand, like, look, we know you mother. Like, maybe they tried to figure out how they were going to get, get together or whatever and make it more organic. But how fucking organic does it have to be? Like, if you're attractive and you see somebody who you're attracted to and who's attracted to you, fuck, why the fuck aren't you fucking going for it? What's, the, what's whatever bullshit that's going on, right? So they got that part of it right enough that they could get. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Apollo, they, here's one thing that I was wondering how they were going to get through and they managed to get through it halfway decent. Uh, Adonis comes from L.A. Apollo's mansion is still fucking up camp. His palatial... I'm sorry, not mansion. Estate. His palatial fucking estate is still up kept by Felicia Rashad and company. And he's a pretty boy. And he never trained before he went to... Phil he goes to Philadelphia to train under, or under Rocky. He never trained before... Uh, uh, you know, technically, he just kind of learned by watching and going to Mexico and having fights and just kind of shadowing people. And the, one of the first things we see is that he's in the palatial estate with the uh, big, not screen, but fucking theater screen down watching YouTube, watching Balboa versus... Thank you! Thank you, loud-ass motorcycle! Loud for no fucking reason! I fucking hate you motherfuckers! Who are allowed for no goddamn reason on your fucking motorcycles. I'm getting a lot of fucking venom out. Anyway, um, so we see him shadow boxing along with the and I'm fucking dark again. Let's see if I can get better lighting here. Without killing the camera. Now I hold it. Alright, I think that's better. We're gonna go with that's better. Alright, so. He's shadow boxing along with Balboa Creed, but rather than shadow boxing along with Creed, his daddy, he's shadow boxing along with, alongside Balboa, against Creed. See? A little Oedipus, I hate my daddy thing going. How can I, can we get this better? You're behind me. Fucking lights. I thought it, fuck it, damn it. I hate this shit. Anyway, you can still hear me. That's the most important part. You can just close your eyes and picture my beautiful face. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing that we see in his palatial estate, and he's in this job in a cubicle and a tie that he does he clearly doesn't like because nobody likes those fucking jobs. I'm sorry, people in interviews who are like, "Oh, we, we want you to be excited about this job. We want you to be here for 30 years, click clacking away on this fucking computer." <sighs> Nobody's excited about those jobs, and you know that. Stop asking those kinds of fucking questions that make us lie to you. Anyway, he's clearly not happy. He's been doing the boxing thing for 15 fights, apparently. And uh, he quits. Apparently, it's probably a job that his mom got him or something. Some connections or whatever. We're going into darkness again. Darkness! Darkness, Doc. Uh, so, yeah, it's a job that his mom probably got him or whatever. He doesn't necessarily like it. He wants to commit to boxing. And his mom doesn't want him to do it because... Reed died in the ring. And Wood Harris's character, who I guess is a relative or the son of Creed's old trainer, doesn't want to train him because Creed died in the ring. A lot of hurt feelings about Creed dying in the ring. And so in order to do it, he tells the police for shot that he's moving out. And I'm sure with the fucking money that he had, with whatever trust fund money that he had, got himself this little rinky dink apartment. And it's like, you probably had more fucking money than that, homie. But it was one of those things where it was like, how are you going to get me to root for this rich, pretty boy who, I get it, was a fighter or whatever, but has been living the last probably 20 or so years, 15 or 20 years, in the lap of fucking luxury <laughs> under Felicia Rashad's care, who, if Mrs. Huxtable is any fucking indication didn't raise no fucking slouch, like, 
uh, you know, okay, he's going to fight his inner demons, but it's not like he's, it's not like he's dead broke just for the sake of being dead fucking broke. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't born in fucking poverty. Um, I'm about to get run over. Not today. All right, so, but they do. Over the course of time, they do with uh, his relationship with uh, Balboa. I do start to root for him, you know what I mean? And they do a pretty good job of transitioning Balboa into Mickey. You know, it wasn't going back into the fucking darkness because the fucking trees over fucking shadowing the goddamn streetlights. And I might get a copyright strike because this motherfucker's uh, radio is out and pretty fucking loud, and I hope not. Going on uh, over the fucking thing. Here we go. All right, there we go. Uh, overall, the movie was very good, it was not perfect. Uh, oh, they do this other stylistic thing where when they introduce a fighter, they introduce his stats. Like, they just superimpose them on the screen. I feel like that's pretty good. I don't know how this looks. Probably looks like shit. But um, I like that. I like that style that they do. I'm trying to get as under as many lights as possible. Uh, I like that. That was pretty good. Hold on. Let me put my hat back. That helps a little bit. Um, I like that. That works for them. Uh, overall... Is Creed worth seeing? Yes. Spend your fucking money. Uh, of the movies that I've seen and reviewed on this channel recently, uh, over the summer and fall, I would rank it just under Steve Jobs' movie. I'd rank it just under Steve Jobs because Steve Jobs was probably perfectly done. Took some nice risks with uh, some brand new aspects of somebody that we might have known but not really known. You know what I mean? Whereas this movie takes an existing property and very lovingly, unlike some other uh, projected reboots and sequels, fucking, I'm talking about you, fucking Paul Fago, you fucking asshole. Uh, this very lovingly takes the Rocky brand and does something not new with it, like new with some of the style and technique, but gives us what we like about it. Gives us the good heart that's in it that made you like it. The outcome that, you know what I mean? It might have been a little bit, oh, he loses, by the way, in a decision. <laughs> but it gives you, you know, same way that Rocky did in Balboa in the first one. Um, there's one part about the fucking fight, though. So, Creed goes down a hard-ass fucking punch. And... Gets fucking fighting, his whole life flashes before his eyes, and he gets fucking fighting spirit. He gets put out to He fucking pops the fuck up. <laughs> he almost fucking kipped up, except he was on his stomach. He just popped the right the fuck up like Brock Lesnar after somebody dropped toe holds him in a wrestling ring, not in MMA, because he lost that one. But uh, it's like, uh, I get him fighting and struggling. To, to stand up or whatever, but for him to just fucking pop up like that, that, that was a little, that was a little too fantasy, but overall, it was fucking fantastic, uh, gave it 15 out of 15, in the trailer review, I'm not giving it that here, uh, by any means, instead, it gets a solid... 13 out of 15. Solid 13. It, had, it took some mistakes. It took a lot of... It took some stylistic risks. And it didn't land all of them. So it can't get 15. Uh, but the ones that landed, it did land. And it stuck. They fucking stuck the ones that, it, that they did land. So 13 out of 15 from your boy. This is an early release review. I'm not the first one because I saw Jeremy Johns, you motherfucker. Fucking post one already. Uh, but this is one of the earliest for me. So, uh, no, Steve Jobs was the earliest. This is one of the earliest. Uh, party people, tell me what you think down there in the comments section. Are you excited about Creed? Uh, do you want to bitch me out about the fucking lighting? Uh, do you want, here's how you fix that. Because a lot of these are done after work or at night. Like the earlier showing was at 730 here. You know how you fix that? You know how you help your viewing experience? You go to youtube.com 
slash surreal 469. There's a little blue button over on the right hand side that says support. What does that do? Well, that helps support the channel, that helps eliminate ads, that helps fund the channel so that I can get a better camera, so I can get a flash on the other fucking side so you can see my beautiful face in all 1080 fucking P's that I upload this on, or however many P's I upload it on that gets it uploaded the fuck fast. Um, also, like, share, subscribe. Tell people about it. Tell people about the party. Invite people to the party. We're over 200 people at the party. We're almost 69,000, my favorite number, without the thousand. Party, uh, total views, damn it. I fucking love this thing. And I fucking love you, party people, and I fucking love Creed. Go watch it. 13 out of 15, tell me what you think. Are you excited to go see it? Are you going to go see it this Thanksgiving? Are you going to go see it tomorrow after watching this? Come on. Tell, tell, tell your boy down there in the comment section. Uh, there's going to be a non-spoiler one. Oh, if you're watching this, fuck the non-spoiler one. But, yes. Uh, yeah. Boom. Boom. Before I get run the fuck over. Boom.